Theater, by experts. The Mutual Broadcasting System presents Murder by Experts, with your host and narrator, Mr. John Dixon Carr, world-famous mystery novelist and author of the recently published bestseller, The Life of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This is John Dixon Carr. Each week at this time, Murder by Experts brings you a story of crime and mystery which has been chosen for your approval by one of the world's leading detective writers. Those experts who are themselves masters of the art of murder and can hold tensity at its highest. This time, our guest expert is the noted mystery writer, Mr. Bruno Fisher, who has selected a first-moving, realistic study of a killer at large. Written by Joseph Ruskell and Paul Monash. And now we present Kenneth Lynch in Prescription for Murder. On a Midwestern highway, a car bearing two men moves at a good speed through a dark and stormy night. The driver of the car has just turned on the car radio. Now for the local and state news. A giant manhunt is on tonight for escaped convict Curly Elkins, who shot his way out of the state prison at Harmon a few hours ago, killing two guards in the getaway. Roads in the vicinity of Harmon have been blocked, and search parties are combing the woods for the escaped desperado. All citizens are asked to be on the alert for Elkins, who is armed and dangerous. Elkins is six feet two, blue eyes, brown curly hair, pale complexion, with a horizontal scar on the left cheek. He was last seen wearing... Why did you turn it off, Doc? Why, I... Well, that is, the fog's bad enough without news like that distracting me. Now, watch that wheel, Doc. Your hand's shaking. Why are you so nervous? Nervous? Well, it's, 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 it's just this, this fog. I can't see an inch ahead of me. It gives me the jitters. Oh, yeah. Say, thanks for stopping to give me a lift. Oh, that's perfectly all right. Didn't think I'd ever get a lift tonight. No one likes to take on a hitchhiker. You from these parts? In a way. You said you were going into town? Yeah. Which town? Oh, same one you're headed for. Somerset? Yeah, Somerset, that's it. You know, it's funny how you get chummy on the road and tell your life's history, huh? So you're Dr. Richard Bennett. You're going to Somerset to take over some ailing old M.D.'s practice. His daughter, too, huh? Uh, what's her name again? Marsha? Yes. Uh, what town did I pick you up at, friend? Harmon. So you've never seen Marsha or her old man, huh? Why, no. No, I haven't. Just exchanged letters with her from overseas Japan. Now here you are, coming to a strange town to take over. <laughs> Life history. It's funny the way guys open up on the road, ain't it? Now, you take me. You know all about me, too, huh? No, I don't. You sure? You didn't say a word. You didn't open your mouth till now, just now, and... When what? When you turned the radio off and stared at me? I stared at you? Yeah. Hey, watch the road, Doc. What was so interesting? Nothing. Nothing at all. No, no, come on, tell me, Doc. Why did you look at me like that? Why the sudden once-over? The, the once-over? <laughs> what gave you that idea? Never mind my ideas, Doc. I'm wondering about yours. But listen, you... you suddenly got a bright idea, didn't you, Doc? You saw the light, huh? <laughs> Maybe you can see this, too, this gun. Now, wait a second. Okay, Doc, just pull over to the side of the road. Come on, Doc, be smart, pull over. Oh, no. No, I'm not going to pull over. I'm going faster. It's 55 now, 60. You can't shoot me, Elkins, not now. Not while I keep it going this fast. You got this figured all wrong, Doc. I can let you have it. After all, what have I got to lose? If I get caught, it's the chair. If we go off the road, so I get killed, so what? But you, you get killed too, Doc. And you've got a lot to lose. Now, look. I'm going to count to five, Doc. If you don't stop by then, I'm going to give it to you. One. Listen, Doc, stop the car now and you'll be okay. 
too. Maybe I'll take your car, but what have I got to gain by killing you? Three, Doc, three. I'm not stopping. Out here in the country, you'll be stranded for the night, but I don't have to shoot you, Doc. I'll get my head start. Four. I said four, Doc. Getting kind of close. How? How do I know you won't shoot me? It's your only chance. If you don't stop now, I'm sure they're going to let you have it. The other way, you got a chance. Ah, that's better, Doc. Now you're playing it smart. Okay, Doc, get out, but don't try anything. Now look, Elkins. You have nothing to gain by... I know, Doc. I said that myself. Now start walking into those woods. But don't argue with me. Get going. You still got a chance, Doc. Just trust your luck. It's been pretty good so far. Got you to be a sawbones. Got your girl. Uh, this'll do, Doc. Stop here. Now he can't be seen from the road. Elkins, I was only trying to be a decent guy, giving you a ride. Sure, and... Doc, you're a good guy. <laughs> you're a big guy, too, just about my size. Take off your coat, Doc. We're going to change clothes. Sure, sure. Come on. Your shirt, too. Here's my coat. With a shirt. All right. Silk shirt, huh? Nice. The pants... Come on, hurry, all right, hurry. All right. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine. Don't bother to put my stuff on. You won't catch cold. You don't have to be modest because. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Who daughters? What do you know? <laughs> Ha! New suit of clothes in the car. What a break. Well, now to get going. Spark plugs must be wet. Come on, baby. Start. Stop. Ain't somebody coming. Motorcycle cop. What's the idea? Oh, what's the matter? Your tail lights out. Want somebody to come along and smash into you? Gosh, it was on last time I noticed. Headlights are okay. Uh, let me start my motor, see if that makes any difference. All right. Maybe it went on then. All right, just a second, I'll have a look. No, switch on your brights. See if it works that way. Okay, just a second. Yeah, copper, just a second while I shift into reverse like this. Some copper. What's that? Roadblock. Might have known they wouldn't waste any time. Hey, you want to get killed? Didn't you see this roadblock? I know, I... Sorry, officer, the fog, you know. Well, let's see your license. Jameson, you come on to the side. Okay, all right. What's the matter, officer? Is something wrong? Yeah, plenty. Some guy escaped from the state prison. Now, let's see your license. My license? You got one, ain't you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's right here in my, my wallet someplace. Yeah, here it is. Let's see now. Uh, six feet two, 190, brown hair. Bennett. Dr. Richard Bennett? Huh? Oh, so you're the new doc coming to Somerset. I... Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I heard old Doc Milburn's been expecting you. Doc Milburn's expecting him. The whole town's expecting him. Or excuse us for stopping you like this, Doc. Yes, what? sir. This is a heck of a reception. Uh, practically being me mistook for an escaped convict. Well, uh, look, Red, I got an idea. Why don't we greet Doc Bennett here in style? You're going off duty in a few minutes anyway. Give him a motorcycle escort to Marsh's place. Hey, that's a swell idea. Now, wait, wait a minute. Well, I don't take want no you. for an answer. No, sir. Boy, would I like to see Marsh's face when you pull up with that siren going. Now, now, look, fellas. I appreciate all Skip this. Skip it, but... Doc. I'm already on the motorcycle. Come on. Let's go. Go ahead, Doc. My relief shows up in time. 
I'll bring up the rear. Here we are, Doc. Here's the house. Well, uh, thanks a lot, officer. Uh, I'll see you later. Sure, sure, but uh, let me get Marsha first. No, hmm? no, that's all right. You just run along. I don't mind at all. Hey, Marsha! Marsha! Hello, Red. Is something wrong? Wrong? Everything's fine. Look who I got with me. Who? Him. Don't you know him? Well, Red, I, I never saw that man before in my life. Hey, what goes? Look, you, didn't you say you was Dr. Richard Bennett? Why, yes, yes. Dr. That... Richard Bennett? Oh, Dick, can you ever forgive me? Say, what is this? <laughs> I thought you'd recognize me at first sight, Marcia, after all our letters. Oh, Dick, do come in, please. Uh, don't stand out here. Now, look, Marcia, what is Oh, it's is all going... right, Red, and thanks for showing him the way. You see, Red, we'd, we'd never really met, well... <laughs> Anyway, it's all right. I'll be... Leave it to a woman to foul things up, eh, Doc? Had me thinking you were that escaped convict or something for a minute. Oh, Red. Well, be seeing you. Goodbye, Red. Well, Dick, yeah. do come in, please. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Well, don't stand out there. Come on. You know, we'd just about given you up. It's so late, and Dad and I thought that with the fog and all over the road, well... Look, I'll call Dad. You know, I hoped you'd look like this, but I never saw it. But I, I, I would have known you. Oh, I, I think I'd have known you too, Dick, if you'd given me one second more. Tall, serious looking. But you didn't write me that you were wounded. Wounded? Well, that scar on your cheek. Oh, oh that. Uh, well, I... Who's that? Just came in, Marshal. Uh, Dad, he's here. Who? Uh, ri- uh, Dr. Bennett. Well, Dr. Bennett, well, well, at last. Hello, Dick. Don't mind my calling you that, though we've never met. Good to see you, Dr. Milburn. Uh, you must be tired and hungry. Well, I, I am a little. Of course you are. I'll show you up to your room and Marsha warm up something for Dick. All right, Dad. Uh, hurry or I'll tell Dick all about Scotty, the motorcycle cop you used to keep company with. Oh, Dad. Until your male romance started, of course. Well, we can all have a nice long chat. You two can talk about those soulful letters, but <laughs> save me a moment with him, Marsha, to discuss his new patient. All right, Dad. And, um... Uh, I'd like him to see some X-ray plates I've just developed. Um, right this way, Dick. Uh, okay. Over here. Here they are, Dick. X-ray shots. Get to know your future patients inside out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I know it's late, but uh, here's one I'd like your diagnosis on. My diagnosis? We'll see if it checks with mine. Here, take it. Now hold it up to the light. Now, what do you make of it? What What do I make of it? Well, uh, I'd say... I'd say... What? Dick? Huh? <laughs> you will have your little joke, eh? What do you mean? Oh, you know well enough what I mean. <laughs> You're holding that X-ray upside down. Boy, I'm hungry. Never been hungrier in my life. Do you want any more, Dick? No, no, you just take it easy. Dick, you seem so jumpy. Is there anything wrong? Wrong? No, I... Just tired and, well, you know how it is, coming into a strange town, taking over a new practice, patients I don't even know. It's got me sort of phased. But that's what I always like about you, your attitude. Attitude? When things go wrong, out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, you finish it, Dick. Uh, finish it? I'd like to hear you say it. Say what? 
with the rest of the poem. The poem? I... I don't know it. Oh, stop kidding, Dick. It's Invictus. Yeah? Well, I still don't know it. Oh, that's strange. Why? Some people like one poem, others... Well, they don't. What's strange? Because that was your favorite poem, Dick. You quoted it to me in one of your letters. Remember? How are you feeling now, Dick? Uh... Oh, okay, I guess. I better get a good night's rest, then you can start right in tomorrow. Tomorrow? You mean start treating patients tomorrow? Oh, yes. sooner you take over, the better. Oh, but I'm all fagged out, Doc. I, I need a rest. Oh, by tomorrow, you'll be as fresh as days. No, no. Look, I, I need a couple of days. That's all. A couple of days, and then I'll be all set. Well, uh, Dick... Let me um, get accustomed to things, and then... I'll see who it is, oh, Dad. Yes. Excuse me, Dick. Is your dad in, Marsha? Yes, Red. Oh, good Lord, what's happened? There's been an accident. Why, why, it's Scotty. Yep, he must have got run over. I found him lying on the road near his motorcycle, unconscious. Dad! Dad! Huh? Come here, quick! Uh, uh, well, what's happened? It's Scotty. He was run over. Oh, great heavens, bring him into my office. Easy now. Easy. All right, Doc. Yeah, All take right. it easy. Yeah. Um, yeah, put him down there. Here? Oh. Yeah, there, on the couch. Okay. Scotty? Oh, Scotty. Looks like hit and run, Doc. Yeah. I'm going down to headquarters and report it. Yes, Red, you do that. Uh, call me at headquarters when you're finished. Marcia, the scissors. Here, Dad. Oh. Got to cut away his uniform. Oh, Scotty. Scotty, this is Marcia. Listen, Scotty. What happened? Mm. No nasal or oral hemorrhage. Good. Some, some guy... Car parked at the side of the road. Easy now. I want to listen to your heart. How is he, Father? Uh, he'll be all right. Oh, thank goodness. Multiple contusions and abrasions. Will Shock. you have to move him to the hospital, Dad? Well, not now. First aid right now. He, he ran over me on purpose. Meant to kill me. What? I, I, I think it was escape killer. Curly Elkins. Curly Elkins? Did you get a good look at him? Uh, uh, Scotty, describe him and we'll notify headquarters. Well... He, his height w- was about... Dr. Milburn, uh, I'll, uh, I'll take over this oh, patient. Dick. But, uh, Dr. Bennett, I don't... Well, I, I thought you wanted to wait a few days. I know, but you were right. I, I got to begin sometime. It may as well be now. Uh, that, that, that voice. What is it, Scotty? That, that voice. Just now. Uh, oh. Lost consciousness again. What did he say? I don't know. Something about a voice. Just leave him to me. I'll handle it. Well, um... Let me explain the case. I know. Um, it's an accident case. How did you know? What? I'm a mind reader. <laughs> Pretty obvious, isn't it? Well, um, my diagnosis... I'll make my own diagnosis. Well, uh, all right, but uh, I'll just stay around and help. No, no help. What? No one's going to help me when you're gone, so I want to handle my very first case in this town alone. Oh, very well. But, Dick, can I? I? I always help Father in cases no, like... No, no, Marsha. You go, too. Now, don't worry. I know he means a lot to you both. Rest easy. I'll take good care of him. Very good care of him. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's go, Marsha. How do you feel, Scotty? Uh, who, who are you? Don't you know? Honest? How did you get run over? Did you get a good look at the driver? No. You sure? I, I, I want to see old Doc Milburn. Why? What do you want to tell him? You sure you can't identify that driver? No. I don't believe you. You're lying. You said that voice. What voice? What did you mean? I, I, I want to talk to Marsha and the Doc. Let me see him. I'm taking care of you, Scotty. I'm going to fix you up good right now. This scalpel ought to do the trick. No. Look, take it easy, Scotty. Lie do? still. Just a little Look, insurance, God, see? I, to make sure you'll be it. all right. Ah! Ah! I wish he'd hurry with Scotty. Dad, there's something funny about him, isn't there? You think so, too? Yes, I do. I recited a poem to him, one he had sent me, and, well, he didn't remember it. Oh. That's nothing to condemn a man for, but I don't know. Maybe we'd better check up while he's busy with Scotty. Yes, I, I can call his club in Los Angeles. 
get a description of him. Maybe you'd better. All right. Hello? Hello, operator? Operator? Put down that phone. I said put down that phone. That's better. We don't want the police now, do we? What have you done to Scotty? Get a box for him after I'm gone. Dr. Bennett. You're not Dr. Bennett. That's right. My name is Elkins, Curly Elkins. Your Dr. Bennett is lying out in the woods with a bullet in his head. I got a bullet for each of you, too, if you make one false move. You're not going to get away with this, Elkins. Dad, don't. Why, you old... Dad! Dad! That was dumb of you, Doc. Never rush a guy with a gun. Now, listen to me, both of you. In case the cops return to check on Scotty's condition, you won't let him in the door. Scotty was fixed up, see, and went away for a rest. If either of you say one word out of turn, you're going to get it. What do you want from us? Why don't you leave? Uh, 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 I'm staying right here, sister, right in this house until the heat's off. Remember this. I just as soon kill you as look at you. I'm staying put. You're going to cover for me. Because if you don't, if you or your old man try anything or give me away, it's curtains for both of you. Now, how does that sound? Convincing? Such a bad night now, was it? Cozy, just the three of us. <laughs> lot better than the pen, huh? You can't keep this up forever, Elkins. Someone's sure to find out. And then... And then it's flowers for you. Yeah, and for your Marsha, too. Get up, Doc. I don't like to see you always laying around, see? He can't get up. You hurt his back when you hit him with your gun. But we'll get even with you, Elkins. You can't keep us prisoners forever. One of us will find a way. You can't always stay up chain-smoking. You've got to go to sleep sometime. Yeah, sure I do, sis. But when I do, I'll take your old man into the room with me and tie him up. Then I'll lock the door and sleep with a gun under my pillow. If anyone tries to get into that room... You've got it all figured out, haven't you, Elkin? But what are you going to do in a couple of hours when my patients come in? <laughs> I thought of that too, Doc. You'll tell them all you got kind of crippled falling down the stairs, see, and you'll send them away. But you won't let out one peep because all the time I'll be upstairs with Marsha. She'll stay alive as long as you play ball, Doc. That's just how long, no more. <laughs> It's taking us so long. Hurry up with that coffee. It's not boiled yet, Elkins. It's taking you so long, you're growing it. Got to have a swallow of java, you hear? Marsh is bringing it. What's the matter? Why are you so jumpy? Why are your eyes so bloodshot? Shut up. Look at your hands, trembling. What is it? Conscience? I doubt Shut it. Shut up, Doc. Clam up, you hear? Nerves? What are you afraid of? You've got the gun in your hand. Clear him up, I say, or I'll... <laughs> Let's see who's jumpy. As soon as I've had my coffee, just wait. Gonna be glad to get rid of me, hey, Doc? Half an hour, it'll be dark, and I'm scramming out of here. You'll feel good about that, eh, Sawbones? I can't say I'll be sorry. <laughs> you hear that, Marcia? He thinks I'm going off and leave you two here to blow the whistle on me. He thinks I'm fool enough to do that. What's they take me for, a dope? Elkins, no. Good heavens, man, surely you won't... Elkins do anything you want to me, but Marsha... She's deaf and dumb. She can't talk to the cops. I promise we won't. We won't breathe a word. Not a word. I beg you. <laughs> Ask me, Doc. Ask me right. Who knows? Come on with that job. Coming. You like it hot, don't you? Give it here. <laughs> yeah, maybe I will, maybe I won't, Doc. Maybe I'll kiss you both goodbye. Or maybe two bullets will do it. <laughs> Can't be sure, can you? Give you kind of a funny feeling, huh? Drink your coffee. Who's nervous now, huh? Don't know if you're alive or dead in a few minutes from now. Ain't that something? Drink your coffee, Elkins. Why? Why what? Why are you so anxious for me to drink this cup of coffee? You wanted it, didn't you? Is it good? I hope so. You hope so, huh? 
You hope maybe a few drops of poison will do the trick and get rid of me, What huh? are you talking you about? You wouldn't try a little thing like that now, would you, to save your own neck? Here, you drink it. Me? Yeah, you drink it. Drink it, I say. Take a few swallows. Very well. Why not? For the silly things. Give it here. There. Are you satisfied now? Okay. Wasn't taking any chances. Give me that coffee now. Dad? Dad? Hmm? BCD? BCD? C2SO4, quick. What's all that? What was that double talk? Double talk, Elkins? Come on, spill it. What was it all about? Where's she run off to? She's gone to the next room, to the dispensary. What for? To get a drink. Drink? Of what? Of a certain liquid. What for? What is this? Tell me, you scheming old devil, or I'll kill you right now. What did she ask you? What did you answer? What? My daughter just asked me the antidote for poison. I gave it to her. Antidote? Poison? That was poison coffee you both just drank, Elkins. It will take exactly 60 seconds to kill you. 60 seconds? Now, now. Marcia! Marcia! Yes, Elkins? I... May I help you? I... Do you want something in this laboratory? Uh, uh, Antidote, a swallow. Oh, yes, I took some myself. I... I... Quite well now, thank you. Give it... Give it to me. Where is it? Now, isn't it a pity I forget? Where... Where is it? What bottle? All these bottles. Which one? Which... Doc, Doc, tell me. Tell me which one. My... My inside's burning. Which one? C2SO4... What's that? The antidote. See what? But the full name's on the bottle. What, what's it mean? What's the name? You're a doctor, aren't Doc, you? Doc, Doc. Surely you weren't merely posing. Give me a break. Any doctor would know, Dr. Bennett. Get it for me. It hurts. Get it. I'd be glad to, Dr. Bennett. If you hadn't crippled me. But I can't move. I must lie on this couch, perhaps, for life. Or else I'd get the bottle for you and save you. I'll, I'll kill you. I'll, I'll, I'll. No, Dr. Bennett. There is no antidote to death. <laughs> And so the curtain falls on prescription for murder, which was chosen by guest expert Bruno Fisher, whose latest thriller, The Restless Hands, will soon be published. Next week at this time, Murder by Experts brings you the story of an invisible menace which terrorizes a whole city. Selected for your approval by the noted mystery writer, Mr. Lawrence Blockman. Until then, this is your host, John Dixon Carr, hoping you'll be with us again next week at this time. Prescription for Murder was written by Joseph Ruskell and Paul Monash. In the cast were Kenny Lynch, Kathy McGregor, Roger DeCoven, Bernie Grant, and Jack Curtis. Music is under the direction of Emerson Buckley, composed by Richard DuPage. Murder by Experts is produced and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Cogan. All characters in our story were fictitious. Any resemblance to the names of actual persons was purely coincidental. This is Phil Tonkin speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>